Hey everyone, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this PlayStation 4 which has been sent in and this particular console has got no power. So basically I went to do this one just quietly in my workshop, took off the screws and noticed something a little bit nasty. So I thought I'd fire up a video, let's try and fix this one together, shall we? So let me just show you what's happening with this when we try and turn it on. First of all, so I'm going to get a power cable. Not going to need the HDMI lead for this one. But let me just show you what's going on. So we're going to plug it in, and as always, it's going to take about five seconds for power to feed through to the right places. Uh, it always does take a while for these to initialize. But let's just try and turn it on. And as you can see, we get absolutely no life from either button. And when we try and offer up a disc, there's already a disc stuck in there, so we can't actually offer up a disc to try and turn it on. So we've got no power at all. And just to make sure that my gloves are not interfering, I'm going to take off my glove. There we go. There is a reason I've got gloves on today. So as you can see, pressing that, no power at all. And it's definitely not the power cable because the power cable works absolutely fine. I have confirmed that it works earlier on today. So definitely no power coming from the console. So let's take it apart. Let's see what we're dealing with and we'll see if we can get this fixed. So you'll notice I've already taken the four T8 screws out of the back and I can just pop off the case. And I'm gonna show you what we are dealing with. So as soon as we open it up, we have a little bit of nastiness on the power supply. So we've got some very visible signs of liquid. This is the furthest I've gone by the way, but we've got some very visible signs of liquid around here and this is why I'm wearing my gloves. I don't know what kind of liquid it could be, so I'm not going to take any chances. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take it apart, just see if we can basically figure it out. So I was going to do this one quietly in my workshop because usually no power on these is down to either the power supply or the safe bridge and that's kind of boring. Well, sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's not, but let's just see what's going on, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try a new power supply. So this is the SAA001 model, judging by the 5-pin power supply. The SAB model has the 4-pin power supply, and the SAA model has the 5-pin. So, I switched to a 4-pin after the first revision. And that is a little bit stuck there. There we go. So, let's see what we're going to be dealing with. This is further than I've gone up until I hit record. So, let's just pop that to one side. And I'm going to grab a power supply. And this is always the first thing that we're going to be checking when we have no power on these. Always want to check the power supply first because it is a common value point on these. I do hear the fizz from the power cable. And still nothing. Let's just make 100% sure that the glove isn't going to affect it. Yep, still nothing. There's still completely no power. But I believe this could be liquid damage, which is fairly rare for the PlayStation. Because the PS4 is designed in such a way where a lot of liquid will just, will just roll off the console. So if you get liquid, for example, here... It'll just end up rolling down and just roll off the front. And it usually doesn't cause any damage. You do get it causing damage sometimes. And I have seen some quite severe cases of liquid damage. Some are fixed, some I haven't. But we never know until we get inside. Another thing I am noticing as well is it is, of course, very dusty. And one thing that has been reported is loud fans. 
So if I show you the ticket here, you'll see that it says internal power supply replacement and then loud fan. And it says no power and loud fans at the top. So it's been overheating at some point. That could be related to the no power issue or it could not. Sometimes we get overheating which causes damage to the south bridge or causes damage to the APU and that can cause no power. So sometimes it's related, sometimes it's not. But I do always take note of the fact that it's been reported that it's been overheating. So let's just get that out there. And there was no warranty stickers on this as well, so I believe someone has already been inside. So let's just continue the dissection. And while I do have your attention, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, then please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any future uploads. I do upload usually at least once a week. That's a little bit sticky. So I do believe this is probably liquid damaged. Uh, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow, that was stuck pretty bad. Oh dear. That's not good, is it? Right. What are we dealing with then? A lot of dust is what we're dealing with. That is for certain. That was stuck pretty bad. We've got something all over here. Oh dear. This is going to be fun. Well, the first thing I'm noticing is that the HDMI port is damaged. So the pins are sticking out on HDMI port. I'll show you that under the scope just to uh, show you that a little bit closer. So this this PlayStation 4, they had the really bad, badly designed HDMI port where the pins were exposed on the back and those have been pushed through. I will show you that under the microscope, but the next thing I'm noticing is some visible signs of liquid damage around here. And I believe that this IC here controls the touch sensor. I could be wrong, but I believe it controls the touch sensor. Another thing I'm noticing is we do have some damage or rather some sort of signs of liquid around the south bridge, which is a very common cause of no power. And basically what happens is when I take apart a console, the first thing that I always do is give it a visual inspection. And the reason for that is because sometimes the problem can be very, very obvious. This looks like it's been reflowed before. It's a little bit discoloured here. It looks like the APU has been reflowed or reballed in the past. Maybe. I could be wrong. Could just be my eyesight playing tricks on me. But I don't know if that's going to be related. I'm going to say it's most likely going to be either something to do with down here. Or it's going to be something to do with the south bridge. So if it's not this. Then... I'm probably going to reflow the south bridge because I can see something here and you can see it on the camera as well just in this corner something has definitely hit this area so yeah I think the plan first of all is to just take a look at this area here let's see what we're dealing with here and if that doesn't fix it then reflow the south bridge and we'll take it from there and if we take a look here right around where the south bridge sits which is just here yeah, we've got very visible damage there. So like I said, the first thing that I noticed was the fact that these HDMI pins are sticking out and that the HDMI port is probably going to need to replace it. Well, not probably, it's definitely going to need replacing. I'm just pushing them back in a little bit. But they can't stay like that. But that was definitely damaged. I'm wondering if maybe someone spilt something on this and then basically quickly pulled the HDMI and the uh, power cable out. Maybe. And that might actually work. You don't know. But I'd probably change that just as a precautionary measure. All right, so taking a look down here. Yeah, we definitely have some issues around here. So, I 
think a lot of this is going to need replacing. I'll tell you what we'll do first. We'll clean it up and then we'll see the true extent of the damage down here once we've cleaned it up. So to do that, what I'm going to use is some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. And I'm just going to give it a really good scrub. Next thing we're going to do is just give it a dry. So I'm just going to use a little bit of warm air. I do definitely see a few burnt components around here. There's a couple of burnt components just up here, some capacitors. I don't think they on their own would cause no power. But I am wondering if it's blown the chip. So I'm actually thinking of just replacing the chip. I'm going to try and test some components first. And I'm thinking just replace the chip to be honest. I honestly don't think we'll see any signs of shorts. So I've got my multimeter set to continuity mode. And I'm just going to test these components. And nope, no signs of shorts there. No short there. Yeah, so no signs of shorts. Let's flip the board around. And yeah, that looks a little bit of a mess there, doesn't it? That definitely looks a bit of a mess there. So let's clean this side and then we'll take a closer look at that. I honestly would love to know what this actually is on here because it's not coming off. Yeah, it's just not coming off at all. We do have a burnt capacitor just here. Some very visible damage here. Okay, well, I guess we just uh, do our best with this. Let's have a look over here a minute. Hmm. Oh, wow. Right, well, we'll leave this area for now. That area there is around by the syscon area, which is this here. So that's a system controller. So that's not good. So even if we restore peril, we could end up with a blue light of death. Let's just give this a clean. Right. It's looking like there's quite a few pads gone here. Alright, so what I'm doing here is just scraping these pads, just see if any of them are actually gone or if they're just really badly damaged. Um, I need to make sure that all of the pads are there and that the path to wherever they go is continuous. Okay, let's just clean this. That should be okay. I don't think any of those pads are actually damaged. They've come up a lot shinier than there was. So 
I'll worry about that later. For now, let's just uh, let's just concentrate down on the down by the power button. So I'm going to remove this chip because I can see some signs of damage underneath. So I'm going to get this chip removed using some hot air. Um, because I can see some signs of damage, I'm going to add some flux before I remove the chip. I usually don't bother until I'm at, until I'm actually resoldering a chip. But in this occasion, or rather on this occasion, I'm going to add flux. smells sweet. I think it's some sort of juice. I need to be very careful here because I don't want to end up tearing traces. So now I'll just grab the soldering iron. And let's just replace the solder that's on here. There we go. Okay, let's get this chip installed. Okay, let's add a little bit more flux. I might have lost a couple of components. No, I don't think I have. Never mind. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to touch up these joints here. There we go. And uh, let's give it a test. Okay, so I'm going to use my non good power supply here. And I don't actually need to put it into the housing to test a power button. Nope. Still nothing. Still nothing. So I'm going to give the safe bridge a reflow. And just basically see if we've got any kind of uh, dry joints or oxidised joints or uh, bad joints underneath the safe bridge, corrosion or anything like that. Okay, so I can't actually do this under the scope. The reason for that is because I need to hold the hot air straight up and basically just hover it over. So I'll basically have to do it like this. I do need as much movement as I can possibly have. So unfortunately no scope for this part. Okay, so let's just give this a quick reflow. So I've got my hot air set to 480 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow here. 
reason so high is because this is a very high thermal mass area, so it does take a lot to reflow this chip. It can be done with hot air, it just needs a lot of heat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a pair of tweezers and when this chip is up to temperature I'm going to give it a quick nudge and make sure that it is actually reflowed before letting it cool down and then giving it a test. I am seeing some stuff come out of this safe bridge. I think it definitely has some sort of liquid damage under there. Right, I do believe that this safe bridge is basically stuck to the board because there's liquid damage under there. Because that is not moving at all. I'm going to remove and replace this safe bridge. Okay, so here's the area for the safe bridge and what we need to do first is we need to clean this entire area. So basically we need to get rid of this old solder that's on the pads and the way we're going to do that is by first of all replacing the solder with some leaded solder because if we try and wick away the pads that are there now then all we're going to do is we're going to tear the pads so we'll replace it with some leaded solder and that will basically lower the melting temperature and allow us to wick it away safely without causing any more damage to the area. So I'm going to get a little bit of leaded solder. Uh, I'm just going to move around in a circular motion. I'm not actually putting any pressure on the pads. I'm using the ball of solder that's on the iron and just basically going around in a circle, barely making a contact with the pads and that just prevents it from causing any damage to the conformal coating on the board. So the reason we go in a circular motion is because if you take a look, if we don't go in a circular motion, well, as we move around, it loses heat and the solder will come off the iron and cause it to group up on the actual pads. We don't want that. We want it to be a nice even area just to make it easier to wick. So we just go around in a circle. And then we can just clean off the tip, get rid of the excess solder and start to wick away. And as you can see here, you can see some black marks here. This is where the liquid has been underneath the chip itself. So this probably is causing the no power issue. The reason I've decided to change it rather than reflow it is because it wasn't budging. It basically felt like it was glued on. So rather than sitting there for quite a considerable amount of time trying to reflow it I'd rather just get it replaced so I'm going to take some solder wick I'm going to cut a few pieces off the reel so solder wick is basically just copper braid and what it's going to do is as we move around with the soldering iron it's going to suck up the solder off the pads and it's basically going to put the solder onto the braid and allow us to clean the pads themselves. So that's actually not going to be a great tip, so I'm going to swap tips. 
That tip is not going to work very well at all. So rather than risking putting damage to the board, I'm also going to use some hot air at the same time. Um, basically, that's just going to allow me to transfer heat a lot easier to prevent damage to the area. Okay, there's definitely something underneath these pads. Alright, I'm just going to clean the area using some isopropyl black hob. Just dry that off. And then I'm going to wick away once more. So I want to make sure these pads are as flat and as clean as I can possibly get them. And clean again. If you clean up while the board is warm, it shouldn't be too tricky, it's tricky to keep the board nice and clean. All right, let's just let's just dry that off. And you can definitely see now where the liquid damage was. So you can see the black marks all around it. That was underneath the chip as well, but the solder wick has got rid of most of that. And whatever tiny little bits are left, it isn't. So that's all nice and smooth. I'm feeling that with my finger. I can't feel any uneven bumps. Can't feel any rough spots where it might have a torn trace or a lifted trace. There is one trace just here, which is a non-connector, and that one does normally come up. It hasn't this time, which is good news. So what I'll do now is I'll take a brand new Southbridge. These can be bought for around about £3 off AliExpress. And this is the CXD 90025G. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it in line. Making sure that the orientation is correct. So we basically want it with the dot in the top left hand corner closest to the... No chip. So this this is the no chip here, and we want to basically get the dot closest to the no chip on this particular model, and on the SAB model as well, actually, for that matter. And um, that's going to make sure that it's in the correct orientation. And then what I'd like to do to make sure that these are actually positioned properly, because we obviously can't see underneath the chip to make sure that the pads are all lined up. But what we can do is we can use our fingers and tension to figure out whether it's in line properly. So when you move it around, you'll notice it's going to wiggle around a little bit. But if you press down on the chip, if it's directly in line, it should not move when you wiggle your fingers. It should not budge at all because it's basically locked onto the pads. There are some guides which can help. But if you want to make 100% sure, you can just press down on the chip. Not too hard, but just press down on the chip and basically just make sure it doesn't move. And you can see that's locked in now. But the problem is now, because I've been pressing down on the chip with my finger, as soon as I move my finger, it's just going to basically pull the chip up with it. So I'm going to move one finger, and I can already feel that my finger is stuck to it. But then I'm just going to basically grab something such as my screwdriver, for example. I'm going to press down on the chip with the screwdriver very slightly. I'm going to lift my finger that is now stuck on there. And I did feel my finger come away, it was definitely stuck, but now I can move the screwdriver 
and the chip will stay in place. And that's actually not perfectly lined up, to be honest. But even just touching it, my finger's going to get stuck to it. It's just the way it is. That feels lined up. <laughs> and it's still moved a little bit, but never mind. Uh, so if it's not perfectly aligned, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Surface tension will pull it in. But just try and get it as close as you possibly can. So once that's done, we can start to flow this in place. So I'm not going to add any flux yet. And the reason for that is because I don't want the chip sliding all over the place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knock my airflow down to 40%. And I'm going to basically flow the chip in place and try and lock it in place before I add any flux to stop it from melting and floating all over the place. So I'm going to go back to the normal cam. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, once again, I need as much room as I can possibly get. So I'm going to basically just do it exactly the same way as I removed it. Only this time I'm going to be soldering it on. So I'm just going to come at a distance, so around about three inches away from the board. I'm just going to get some heat into the general area. And remember, I don't want this chip to move, so I am going to keep a very close eye on it and make sure that it doesn't move. I'm going to come in a little bit closer and just start moving the air around. Keeping a close eye on that chip, make sure it doesn't move out of place, make sure that no air gets underneath the chip and starts to fly it all over the place. Gradually work my way in closer till I'm about an inch away from the board. Don't want to get too close, we don't want to burn the chip. And then just come round in a circle. Okay, and that should be tacked in place. So now I can add some flux. So I'll move the air away while I'm adding the flux. I'm just going to add a layer of flux all the way around. Let it seep under the chip. And then I'll flow it into place fully. So I'm going to go back up to 60 degrees, so 60 percent airflow. And then just flow this in place. Should take just under a minute to actually flow it into place. Remember, this is a fairly big chip. Which is why I'm not using a nozzle. I want as much surface area as possible. I'm going to come in and give the chip a nudge. And then we're going to call that good. So now I'm going to let the board cool down before I clean off the flux. Okay, let's clean up. So I'm going to start, because the board's still a little bit warm, I'm going to start in this area here. Just come around in a circle, let this isopropyl alcohol flow around the board. I don't want to put immediate isopropyl alcohol on the chip. Because I don't want to cause it to go into thermal shock. But once it's cooled down a little bit from the IPA, then I can just spray it freely. And just give it a nice clean. Make sure there's no flux left over. And this is also going to get rid of any little bits of corrosion as well that's around this area. Okay. Got a nice puddle of isopropyl alcohol on the desk. Well, that's fairly strong. So I'm just going to clean that before it goes sticky. And at the same time, the board's draining off as well. The IPA is not going to hurt the board, it will just evaporate. It's non-conductive. 
It's not going to hurt the board, but let's just dry it off a little bit. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Let's hope that was the cause of the problem. There we go. There we go. Right, so we do get a beep. Uh, that power supply wasn't fully inserted, so it is going off after two seconds. But we do now have power restored to the power button. And we can put it back in the board in the uh, chassis for testing. That's brilliant. That's brilliant news. So let's get this cleaned up. Let's get it ready to go back into the housing. I'm going to start by putting some fresh thermal paste on here. So even though we've seen that it does at least attempt to turn on, we need to make sure everything's working. So what I'm going to do is, now that this is prepped and ready to go back in, I'm going to clean up the rest of the housing because I don't want to have to take this back apart again if it works because that's just a waste of time. So I'll add some fresh thermal paste. I'm going to get the rest of the housing cleaned and then I'll resume the video. We'll put the board back in and hopefully it works. All right, let's give this a whirl, shall we? see what happens with it now hopefully the customer power supply is working and that no liquid actually got inside it let's find out I mean a power supply can replace at cost okay turns on disk drive spins means we have some some kind of brain power I'm not going to put a HDMI cable in just want to see if it goes to a white light it is good news that it is turning on though let's see if we've got a disk drive button we do and it does go to a white light as well we've got Watch Dogs 2, Watch Dogs 2 in there so it goes to a white light, so let's change that HDMI port. That was, of course, the perfect amount of thermal paste. Just saying. <laughs> so, yeah, that port was definitely damaged, so I'm going to get it replaced. So I'm just going to hold the board like this. I'm going to take my hot air I'm going to set it to 480 degrees Celsius at 60% airflow and I'm just going to heat up the board until it drops out okay there's the port out I'm going to keep the heat on And actually, let's do that from the other side. So, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll replace that solder with some leaded solder. Let's change irons. And I'm just going to basically replace all of the solder that's on there. And then I'm going to use a solder sucker to clean out those ground holes. Okay, let's use the hot air again. This time I'm going to put the nozzle on so I can focus the heat more.
I'm gonna knock down the heat a little bit, or the airflow rather. These ground holes can be a pain. Finally, they are clean, and now I can just grab a new port, and drop it in line. Let's move that other one from there, because that's been doing my head in for the past 10 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add some flux to the back of the port. And I'm just going to basically tack down this port. I'm not bothered if I get a couple of bridges. I just want to hold it in place. Just like that. So then I can flip the board around and I can sold that in the ground legs. And get some flux. And I'm going to apply some fresh lily salt that. So I'm going to let some heat transfer. And I'm making contact with the pad and the leg. Isn't that gravity beautiful? Isn't that gravity beautiful? Okay, and I want to make sure that the solder actually flows through the holes, so I'm going to use hot air again. I'm going to cheat. Okay, and there we go. So that's the back secured. So let's flip it around, let's take a look at this side. Always add flux. The group all of that excess solder up and then I'm going to wick it away just a quicker way of doing it and leave a little blob in the corner that I can just drag across Dry it up, just use a cotton swab for that. Okay, let's give that a check. And yep, yeah, all pins are solid. So last thing we want to do before calling this job good is just make sure we've got no bridges on the pins that we can't see. So I've got the multimeter set to continuity mode and I'm going to check each pin individually. I'm just checking for shorts to ground on these pins because if some of them are shorted to ground then they're going to have a bridge on the data lines 
So the first few I'll just check for shorts against the ground just to make sure. Um, is that the last pin? Yes, it was. Okay, so no bridges. All pins are soldered. Back legs are soldered. Good to go. There is one final thing I, need, I do need to do, which I have to do every single time. And that is going to be just to clean out the port itself. So I want to clean the inside of the port because we guarantee there's going to be some flux that's got inside there. So I'll clean this side. And then inside the ports as well. Bit of isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. Doesn't take long. Optical port should be fine. And I'm going to clean out these ports as well. They don't look great. Okay, good to go. Let's get it back together and test it, shall we? So, while I'm waiting for that to boot up, I'm going to carry on putting this back together because it appears to be working absolutely perfectly. I do need to do a couple of basic tests. But I am going to start screwing it back down. The only thing I can't do is put the case on. Because the HDMI cable's in. And that's just started rebooting. So the reason I'm doing that is because I need to wait to see and make sure it actually loads into 1080p. The Elgato capture card does not like sudden resolution changes. Um, for that reason, I've basically got to wait for it to display in 1080p before I can display it on the capture card itself. And there we go. That is awesome. So we've got Watch Dogs 2, which is what was in the disk drive. So the disk drive is working. Uh, 1080p appears to be working. So I should make sure that's set to automatic. And it is. So 1080p appears to be working. Uh, let's just go to System Info. Version 8.5. Working fine. Network, let's just make sure it connects to the internet. Okay, and I don't do this very often, but I'm going to test the Ethernet port as well. Reason for that is because it has got liquid damage, or it has had liquid damage. So I want to make sure the Ethernet port works as well. So I'm going to grab a cable which is connected directly to my. Whoops, I just dropped my uh, <laughs> my access point there. Oopsie. Uh, well, test the internet connection. So I've got a Cat7 cable in front of me, which I'm going to use in a second. Uh, use a LAN cable. I'm going to plug that in. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. That, ladies and gents, is done. And that is one working console. I am super happy about that. Right, so I guess that just about wraps it up for this repair. So, just to summarise on this then, so this was sent in initially because it had no power. And also it said on the ticket that it had loud fans, which not really concerned about. It's not going to have loud fans if it's not turning on. So the main concern is getting it to turn on. And I always service consoles when they come in for repair anyway. So I'm not really bothered too much about that uh, when it comes to the actual repair. Uh, like I said, if the customer did want a thorough clean, then I would do it. But it would cost them more. Uh, so I'll get into the customer tomorrow and just see what they want to do about the chassis and things because there is still some liquid damage 
on the chassis. Um, I mean, it's probably not going to bother him, to be honest. But uh, it is what it is. But this came in for no power as the primary issue. And it turned out that the console was indeed liquid damaged. So I did replace the little IC that's just behind the power button here. That could have been one of the causes of no power. But even after turning it, even after replacing that, it still wasn't turning on, basically. So I basically had a look at the safe bridge, realised there was some liquid damage on the safe bridge as well. So I attempted to reflow it. Reflowing would normally work in that situation, but because of whatever liquid was on there, it basically caused the chip to get stuck. So that meant that the chip had to be replaced. I mean, those chips, that cost literally three pound two pound to three pound each or around about five us dollars from aliexpress so i wasn't really bothered about you know the cost and things like that it's not a cost saving measure it's just a time saving measure by reflowing it it does usually fix it but on this occasion that wasn't an option because of it getting stuck on the uh, on the board because of the liquid underneath the chip but by replacing that chip we was able to get it to successfully turn on and yeah this console can work again so just to give you a brief bit of information about what the safe bridge actually does the safe bridge is basically responsible for all input and output devices that includes the power button it includes some voltage rails so 3.3 volts 5 volts and things like that and it also is responsible for the usb port the ethernet port the um HDMI port and things like that. Uh, all input and output devices are controlled by the safe bridge. Uh, so without that, we've got no power, we've got no standby voltage, we've got nothing, we've got no console. But yeah, all in all, a successful repair, I'm happy. Uh, I'm sure the customer is gonna be happy as well. Um, but that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will always do my best to answer them. And if you do like this type of content and you want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you're notified every time that I upload. If you do want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member by clicking on the join button down below. You can become a Patreon supporter using the link in the video description, or you can just buy something off Amazon or Banggood using one of my affiliate links. It all helps the channel. And also just commenting and liking and getting subscribed also helps the channel a whole lot as well. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.